Hello and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Jason. It is a joy to have you worshiping with us today, wherever you're at. We're so glad to be together. If this is your first time, we'd love to get to know you. We'd love for you to sign up and let us know that you're here. We've got a gift card to Starbucks that we'd love to send to you. This week, as we've been doing this summer, we're diving into the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus's Sermon on the Mount, where he shares what the king kingdom of heaven is like. Today, we're gonna be hearing him teach about prayer and Pastor Spencer is gonna be leading us in that teaching. If you'd like to grow deeper with that sermon, you can go to switzer.church slash next and you'll find sermon discussion questions. You can have those uh, conversations with people around your table or you can be in a small group, whatever. Those are there for you and a lot of other resources to grow deeper in your faith. Next up is Stephanie and she's gonna share with us some things that are happening this week at Switzer. Let's take a listen. Hey, welcome to Schweitzer. We are so glad you're here. I'm Stephanie. We often like to say that Schweitzer is a church for your whole life because we have so many opportunities for every age group from little kids through adult groups and classes. And with that, I'm excited to announce the relaunch of our young adult ministry on Tuesday, August 16th at 7 p.m. in the Student Center. This ministry is aimed at young adults who are out of high school and in that next season of life. So if that's you or someone you know, come join us that night for games, hanging out, and discussing what this ministry will look like in the future. You can find out more at schweitzer.church groups. This week, our second season ministry for those aged 55 and up is having its monthly gathering on Thursday, August 4th at 1130. Our focus this month is going to be on our partnership with Pittman Elementary and our Reading Buddies program. We're also having a book drive. You can find out more and sign up today at the Blue Booth or by going to schweitzer.church slash second season. Speaking of Pittman Elementary, we are still looking for people to help us fill up a backpack for this school year. You can grab a shopping list and a bag on your way out and return those by next Sunday. There are so many ways to get connected here at Schweitzer in a group or with serving opportunities that it's hard to list them all in one announcement. So here's a list of ways that you can get connected, including the blood drive happening this week on Thursday and the last blast of summer next week. You can find out more information about any of these online at schweitzer.church slash next. We are so glad that you're here with us this morning. Let's continue with worship. Thanks, Stephanie. If you're worshiping with us live today, we encourage you to say hello in the chat room, or if you'd like prayer, there's somebody in the prayer room that would be happy to pray with you. You can use those two things. Next up is a song of worship. So let's open up our hearts and ask the Lord to come and dwell with us and to lead us and to help us enter into worship. Prepare. 
trust you, Lord. Surely goodness, surely mercy, right beside me all my days, and I will dwell in your house forever, and bless your holy name. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Friends, we come to a time of prayer. I'd like to invite you to join me in a collect for today. And then we'll have a time where you and, and we all can say our prayers in a space of, of silence, attitude of prayer. And then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. So would you pray with me this collect? Oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, friends, we're going to get ready to go to the Lord's Prayer. And maybe you thought that that first collect was a short prayer. Well, as we enter into the Lord's Prayer, we find that Jesus teaches us that we don't have to go on and on, but there's some things that really reflect the nature of our hearts and open us up to God's work. And when we say some things, just a few things, in fact, maybe even Lord have mercy, the Lord does some great work in our lives and in our communities. So. With that being said, I invite you to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the glory, and the power forever. Amen. Friends, um, our giving is an act of obedience. It's an act of joy. And the Lord does some fantastic things with it. Over the past several years, Schweitzer's had some uh, community impact ministries that have reached and touched a lot of people. And then a couple years ago, um, Flourish Community Development Corporation was born. Recently, Wayne Thompson became the executive director of Flourish CDC. And Wayne is going to share with us some of the things that, uh, about who he is and about what he's up to. So let's take a listen to Wayne about Flourish.
Hi, I'm Wayne Thompson. I currently serve as the Executive Director of Flourish Community Development Corporation. Still sounds odd for me to say because a little over two and a half years ago now, uh, I was ending a 40-year career in retail, uh, the last 20 of which I served as part of the management uh, team at Bass Pro Shops, and I was getting ready for a season of retirement. Mrs. Thompson, being the insightful, thoughtful, loving, nurturing, caring person that she is, realized that going from a 65-hour hectic work week to a less scheduled season in life probably wasn't the best way to transition. So she very thoughtfully came up with quite an extensive honey-do list to help me through that transition. Well, Pastor Jason probably had a similar idea because during that same time period, he reached out and asked if I would join the board of Flourish. Flourish was founded on the ministries that were developed right here at Schweitzer Church. But what we found was the need for those ministries extended beyond this campus and the reach of Schweitzer. We felt the best way forward was for us to establish a faith-based, separate, not-for-profit entity where we could engage with other churches, not-for-profit groups, businesses, schools, and take these life-transforming ministries to the community at large. While we still operate ministries here on this campus, such as the food pantry and the two coach houses, we recently concluded an eight-week Jobs for Life program at the Salvation Army Harbor House, as well as the 10-week Story of God program at the Well Church, which is north of I-44 here in Springfield. The need in our community is great, and I am humbled to have been asked to serve as the Executive Director of Flourish, an organization that helps to take people from a life of despair and dependency and help them transition into a life of faith, self-sufficiency, and independence. If you'd like to learn more about Flourish, you can check us out at flourishcdc.org or better yet, if you'd like to get involved in the ministries on this campus or as part of our outreach program, you can contact me at wayne at flourishcdc.org. Once again, thank you for having me on board. I'm honored and humbled to be a part of this vital ministry, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Wayne. It is so good to have Wayne on board leading and, and directing the Ministries of Flourish. We are anticipating some fantastic things uh, under Wayne's direction. If you'd like to continue to be a part of what's happening at Flourish and through the Ministries of Schweitzer, we encourage you to take a moment and go to schweitzer.church give, or you can use the Church Center app. You can, you can give to what the Lord is doing in and through Schweitzer, in and through Flourish today. Thanks for being generous with your giving. All right. Now, next up is Spencer and the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord's Prayer. Let's dive in. Blessed are the meek, the poor in spirit, the peacemakers, the persecuted. Seek God's kingdom, care for widows, Love your enemies, turn the other cheek, give, pray, fast. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Well, friends, welcome today. My name is Spencer. I'm so glad that you're here with us. Uh, we're continuing our series on the Sermon on the Mount. So all summer long, from Memorial Day weekend to Labor Day weekend, we are diving deep into this incredibly important sermon that Jesus teaches. It's in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And we're taking our time on this one because it's just so important. 
The whole sermon, the point of what Jesus is saying is he's describing to us and teaching to us what life is like in the kingdom of God. And as we've been going through this series, here's a few things that we've seen. We've seen that, that when it comes to life in the kingdom of God, everyone, absolutely everyone is invited. No one is too far gone or too lost or too hopeless. Everyone is invited to life in the kingdom of God. That's how the sermon began with a, a series of, of, of poems, of invitations, blessings to absolutely everyone. And then as we've been going through this series, we've seen that life in the kingdom of God is mostly about our hearts. Because here's the thing, you can be outwardly religious. You can do all the right things on the outside, but on the inside, you can be far from God. And Jesus didn't come for us to be good at religion. He came for us to have a dynamic, personal, growing relationship with our Father in heaven. And so as, the, as this uh, sermon is exploring, it's teaching us about how to have a right heart with God. And so this last week, we started a new section in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 6. And as this new section is exploring, we're really exploring this, this uh, way of having a personal relationship with our Father in heaven. Last week, Jason started this off on a new section with an overview of what this section looks at. And Jesus talks about three spiritual disciplines, personal spiritual disciplines that we would use to grow closer to God, um, giving, prayer, and fasting. And what we saw in this overview is that if you can do all these right things with the wrong heart, like the wrong motives, well, then you miss God. And so the word Jesus used, the biblical word that Jesus used to describe somebody who does the right religious things with the wrong heart is a hypocrite. And what I loved about what Jason said in his sermon last week is that we all have a tendency towards hypocrisy. We all have a tendency to do the right thing with the wrong heart. And in the midst, we miss our Father in heaven. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to drill down on one of those disciplines that Jesus talked about. Because as Jesus talked about it, uh, he, he introduced to us the Lord's Prayer. And so we're going to explore that today because how can the Lord's Prayer not be its own sermon? It can't just be part of an overview. It's got to be part of its own sermon. And so we're going to drill down on the Lord's Prayer today, what Jesus teaches us about how to pray. And if this is one something you want to go uh, deeper on, we're obviously not going to say everything about the Lord's Prayer. You can find on our website a six-week series that we did last year on the Lord's Prayer. It would be helpful to just drive down uh, deeper into, into what he teaches. And so let's get into this. Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, Jesus starts his teaching on prayer. Here's how it goes. Jesus says, and when you pray, and I want you to notice what he said there. He said, when you pray, not if you pray, but when you pray, because Jesus has an assumption that his followers are going to be people who pray. Because listen, I want you to catch this. Prayer is the most basic and most important thing that a follower of Jesus will do. I'm gonna say that again. Prayer is the most basic and important thing that a follower of Jesus can possibly do. And yet, prayer is probably also the thing that we neglect the most. So Jesus, though, has an assumption that you're going to pray. So when you pray, he goes on and says, Do not be like the hypocrites, these are the people with the wrong motives, for they love to pray seen in the synagogues and the street corners to be seen by others. And truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, again, it, not if, but when, because prayer is the most basic and important thing a follower of Jesus can possibly do. When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, again, not if, but, but when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask him. We're going to pause here. The next verse, verse 9, introduces the Lord's Prayer. But before we read the Lord's Prayer, we need to catch what Jesus said because he just said something that is so profoundly important that if you miss it, you will struggle with prayer maybe for years until you catch it. This is so profoundly important. So I want you to notice that right before Jesus introduces us to the Lord's Prayer, he gives us a contrast. On one hand, he contrasts, a, a, one hand is a, is a picture of the pagans. Um, really what he's talking about here are the Gentiles, the non-Jewish neighbors that they would have had in, in Jesus' day in the first century. And these Gentiles, they would have believed in lots of different gods. There would have been gods for different cities, geographic areas. There would have been, been gods for different parts of life, a god of war, a god of love, fertility, a um, god of business. In fact, every trade had their own god that they would have worshipped. 
And, and these gods that these Gentiles worshiped were not personal gods. They didn't, they didn't care about you. They weren't personally invested in you. They didn't, they didn't have any sort of love or compassion on, on people. And so, um, it was your job as, as a, as a human to try to impress the gods that were around you. And you would do this in different ways, maybe through sacrifices or through prayers, but again, not personal prayers because these gods don't actually care about you. And so instead, you would have, you would have tried to pray in the right kind of way with the right words and the right order with the right amount of words in order to try to impress the God so that this God would, would do whatever it is that you want. Prayer for these, these pagans is more like incantations where you're trying to almost like crack the code of how do I say this in the right kind of way with the right words in order for the God to, to come through for me. And so Jesus says, Do not be like them. Because for Jesus, as we were reading through here, I hope you caught this, prayer is not primarily about getting things. God is not some sort of cosmic vending machine. That's that's not the picture that we get here. Instead, as we listen to Jesus talk about God, we see that God is our Father. Our Father who loves us, is compassionate and kind to us. Our Father who's personally invested in us. I mean, he, he sees what's done in secret. He, he knows our needs before we ask him. He knows us so well. And so you have this contrast. And on, on one side are these pagans who are trying to get on their God's good side. And then on the other hand are these Christians who are already on God's good side because God loves them so much. I mean, the truth is that when you belong to Jesus, you are his beloved son and daughter. This is what's true for you. And so you don't have to work to impress God. He already is on your side. And, and so this is the, the picture that Jesus gives us. Now, you might have heard that phrase um, that your father knows what you need even before you ask him. And that might cause a question for you. You might, you might wonder to yourself, well, why should I pray at all if God already knows what I need before I ask him? And again, I'll answer that, and because I've had people ask me that question, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that with something I just said a few minutes ago, that prayer is not primarily about getting things. God is not a cosmic vending machine. What Jesus presents here, what Jesus teaches, is that God is our Father who loves us. He's personally invested in us. He loves us individually. He knows our needs. He sees what's done in secret. And so therefore, prayer is not about primarily getting things. Prayer is primarily about relationship. The reason we pray is that we might grow in relationship with our Father who loves us so much. This is why prayer is the most basic an important thing that a follower of Jesus can possibly do. But if you approach prayer like one of these pagan Gentiles, where you're thinking to yourself, I need God to do X, Y, or Z for me. How do I get God to do this? Well, your prayer life is always going to be miserable. You're always going to feel like you're coming up short, like, like you don't pray enough, or you don't know how to pray, you don't know the right words to pray because you don't see your prayers being answered. And it's like, if only if I prayed more, then maybe God would answer my prayers. Or if, if only I prayed in the right kind of way, then God would answer my prayers. And, and this is how a, a pagan would pray. And Jesus would say to you, well, don't be like that. This is, this is not how you're supposed to be because prayer for a follower of Jesus, life in God's kingdom, it's, it's about an experience of trusting and resting in God's goodness. It's about growing in a relationship with him where no matter what happens in our lives, we trust him and we entrust ourselves to him. And so and so this is the the heart of prayer. So if you're going to say anything about prayer, we have to start with this recognition that the one we pray to actually loves us. The one we pray to is actually interested in us. He's personally invested in us. And, And with that said, now we can get into what Jesus teaches, the teaching he gives us about prayer, the Lord's Prayer. So here's the very next verse. Right after that contrast, here's the very next verse. Verse 9. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And catch how Jesus starts this prayer. We address God as our Father. Not as, you know, our Lord with us, his servants. Not not as some ambiguous idea of God, like Almighty God in heaven. No, it's our Father. We relate to Him as our Father. We are His children, His sons, His daughters. He is our Father, and this is how we relate to Him. He already knows what we need. He sees what's done in secret, and everything that is about to be said in the Lord's Prayer is born out of this understanding of God's goodness, 
his interest in us, and his love for us. And so we start with the recognition of God our Father. Verse 10, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When God is your Father who loves you and is invested in you, the first thing you ask for is for his will to be done because you know that the best thing that could possibly happen to you, the best thing that could happen in the world is for God's will to happen. That's the best thing. So therefore, that's the first thing I'm gonna pray for is that my life and everything around me might conform to God's image, God's, God's will, because God's will is actually good. And this is what I want my life to look like. And so that's the first thing I pray for. Verse 11, we say, give us today our daily bread. To catch that word today and daily, every day, we trust our Father who is good to provide for us. Of course, with this verse, we think about the Israelites who wandered in the desert for 40 years, trusting um, in the goodness of God to provide for them daily bread. Every day, bread from heaven would come, manna would come. And so in the same way, we bring our lives before our Father who loves us and we entrust Him to provide for us. So what do you need today? What is your daily bread? Maybe it's something physical, material. Maybe it's something emotional, relational, all kinds of ways. Like every day we trust our Father who is good in order to provide for us. Keep going here, verse 12. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Now, when God is our Father who is good, who loves us, is interested in us, of course we confess our sin to Him. We seek His forgiveness because we don't have anything to hide. There's no shame before Him. He already loves us. Every day His mercy is new, and so we, we seek His forgiveness, and then we seek to give that forgiveness to others. And then verse 13, the last line of the Lord's Prayer. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And so the prayer ends by trusting in God to protect us from danger and from evil and from, and from Satan himself. And of course it does, because God is good. And that's the Lord's Prayer. Now there's so much that we could say about this. Oh my goodness, we could spend weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks on this, exploring the words and, and diving deep into the phrases. In fact, we did that in a series not too long ago, but that's not what we're gonna do today. Instead, what I, what I want us to do today is I wanna draw our attention to a, a really simple um, observation about kind of the big idea of what we see presented in the Lord's Prayer. And this, this observation, it's, it's not real profound, but sometimes I feel like my job is, is really just to point out the obvious. And so that's what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna point out the obvious. And I just want you to think about this simple observation. And this is one of those things where, you know, I've said the Lord's Prayer for decades, but I, I, I came to understand this, this observation more recently. And since then, I, I really can't let it go because it's really shaken um, how I think about prayer and, and, and the goodness of God that, that we experience uh, through prayer. And so, so here's my really simple, not profound observation, but here it is. The Lord's Prayer is really short. <laughs> That's my observation. The Lord's Prayer is really short. Now you're, you're thinking to yourself, yeah, great observation. I don't know what we're paying this guy for, but this, that's my really simple observation here. The Lord's Prayer is really short. In the English translation we just read from the NIV, it's 52 words. I counted. In the original Greek, it's 56 words. Again, I counted. That's really short. And I find that to be so fascinating because it's not at all what I would have expected. I mean, the Bible talks about Jesus going off all night long to pray out in the wilderness or up on a hillside by himself. And then when it comes time for him to teach us how to pray, he gives us 50 some odd words, five sentences, and that's it. And I, and I think that's so fascinating because it's not what I would expect that, that the Lord's Prayer would be so short instead of this maybe lengthy um, prayer that covered so many different parts of life, but instead it is short, it is concise, it is simple. And I just think that's so fascinating because how many times have you felt, you know, I just don't pray enough. You ever feel like that? I just don't pray enough. I mean, you listen to most sermons on prayer. I've certainly preached these sermons, but you listen to most sermons on prayer. Most sermons on prayer have a really simple takeaway. You should pray more. That's most sermons on prayer. You should, you should, you should pray more. You should do more. You should try harder. You should really invest more time in this. And that's most sermons on prayer. And then I look at the Lord's Prayer and it's 52 words, five sentences. And so we think to ourselves, you know, I need to be praying more and we walk away feeling bad about how we pray, or we maybe we listen to someone else pray, 
and it's lengthy and they don't have any like ums or uhs in their prayer. And they use like really big words like sanctification or things like that. And we think to ourselves, oh my goodness, they pray so good. I don't pray like that at all. And so we start to feel bad about our prayers. We don't pray long enough. We don't pray eloquently enough. We don't pray uh, with enough length. And, and we think to ourselves, I, should, I just, I'm not doing very good at that. But you know who doesn't think that about your prayers? Our Father in heaven who sees what is done in secret and is so personally invested in you. Our Father in heaven, who, who knows what you need even before you ask him, he doesn't look at your prayers and is like, wow, that's way too short. He doesn't have a clock watch on it. He doesn't look at your prayers and compare it to someone else's thinking you really need to, to get this better. I mean, you're, you're, ooh, that's awkward. And that's not how our Father in heaven looks at your prayers at all because that's not what prayer is about. Prayer is about relationship. It's about growing in trust with our Father who loves us deeply. That's what prayer is about. And so therefore, this is why prayer is the most basic and important thing that a Christian can ever do. But too often what we do is we take this really simple thing and we make it so complex because we make it about us. We make it about our performance and what we are doing and what we feel like we ought to be doing instead of just resting in the goodness and the grace of our Father. Not too long ago, I was going through a, a bit of a season where I felt like my prayers were really stale and stagnant. And, and when I say not too long ago, I, I wish it was longer ago than, than it really was. That's not something you're gonna hear preachers say too often that even preachers and pastors struggle with prayer. And I was in one of those, one of those places and I, and I just, I wasn't satisfied with my prayer life. I felt like I should be doing more. I felt like I wasn't really growing in it. I just felt stale and stagnant and cold. And, and, and when I go into those kinds of seasons with really anything in life, but you know, in prayer as well, I, I revert back to, to how I handle most of my problems in life. And I just thought to myself, you know what I need to do is I need just, I need to do more. I need to try harder because that's what the world teaches us about how to handle problems you, you have. The, I mean, the worldly way is, you know, you work more hours, you do more workouts, you, you count your calories more, you do more, you try harder. This is the way of the world. And so sometimes we apply this um, to the kingdom of God as well. But you know what? That's not really how the kingdom of God operates. The kingdom of God doesn't operate on a try harder, do more kind of basis. The kingdom of God operates on a receive God's love. Let this fill your life. That's how the kingdom of God operates. But, but I was in this, in this place, I was, I was like, I need to do more. I need to wake up earlier. I need to read some books about prayer. I really need to invest in this and try harder and do more. And, and one Sunday morning, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. And, and it was one of those things, the Holy Spirit, I felt like gave me an assignment that was totally counterintuitive to anything I've done before. And I was sitting in worship and I, and I felt the Holy Spirit impress upon me that for the next month, I should only pray the Lord's Prayer. And I, and I felt this, this impression by the Holy Spirit and I protested. I was like, no, 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 no. I can't do that. That's not enough. I mean, it's 50 some odd words. It's only five sentences. That's, that's not enough. But I, but I obeyed and I started to, to go through my, my day and I go through my, maybe my daily devotional time. I read the Bible and then I'm going to have a time of prayer. But my time of prayer, I limited myself and I felt like this is what the Lord wanted me to do was just pray the prayer that Jesus gave us. And so I just started to pray those five sentences, 50 some odd words. And it took, I don't know, 30 seconds. And it's like, is that it? Is that all, all I'm supposed to do? And and I felt bad. I felt bad because it wasn't enough. I was like, ah, I'm not, I'm not doing enough. And, and after about 10 days of doing this, I had this, this epiphany that I think the Lord wanted me to realize that was so helpful for me. Because as I was going through the Lord's prayer and I felt bad about that's all I'm saying, I started to ask myself, why do I feel like I need to do more? I mean, why do I feel like the words of Jesus, my Savior, my Lord, why do I feel like those aren't enough? Why do I feel like I need to say more, spend more time on this? Like, like, why is that? And I realized that I was making prayer so much about me and my performance that I was missing the heart of God. I was missing that this is really about relationship. It's really about resting and trusting in God's goodness and his grace towards me. And I felt like what the Lord wanted to show me was just simply this, that this isn't up to me. This is about my father who loves me, my father who sees what is done in secret, my father who, who knows my needs even before I ask him that this is what, what he wanted to show me. And so I spent this month simply praying those words and it was transformative for me because it, it liberated me from thinking that I had to somehow perform for God. 
And I can't think about how often we miss this. We, we begin to make prayer something that it isn't, and we end up feeling bad about our prayer life. We end up thinking, I don't pray enough. I don't do enough. I don't pray like that other person. And yet when our Father hears our prayers, He never thinks that about us. When our Father hears our prayers, however clumsy or short they might be, He rejoices. This is His character. This is what He's like. And this is what Jesus is teaching us. And so, of course, Jesus doesn't give us this lengthy, long prayer. He gives us this simple thing because this is about relationship. It's about trust. It's about growing in his goodness and resting in who he is. And so today, I want to offer you a word of encouragement because I know that the majority of people who are going to listen to this message struggle with prayer. I know that the majority of people who who are listening to this message think to themselves, I I don't pray enough, I don't pray good enough, I don't, I don't pray long enough, I struggle with this, I don't know what to say. And we all have seasons where we go through this. Maybe we feel like we're, we do less, uh, better, or we don't do as well as, as other seasons. And, and I just wanna offer you a word of encouragement that our Father does not think that you struggle with this. Our Father does not think that you're bad at this. Our Father does not think that this is something that, that you, you are clumsy at. He just rejoices in sharing himself with us. And this is the the good news of life in God's kingdom, that when we have a heart that's open to him, oh my goodness, he just wants to meet with us. And there are times, yeah, we might compare ourselves to others, or there are times we might think, oh, I'm not doing very good at this. And yet I think what Jesus would say to us in those times is very simply, do not be like them. Because what he wants is relationship. What he wants is for you to rest in his goodness and his love, his kindness. He's personally invested in you. And so maybe you struggle with prayer. Here's a good place to start. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. This then is how you should pray. Here's five sentences, 52 words, where Jesus begins to help us to trust him. Our Father loves you. He is good and generous and personally invested in your life. And he wants you to know that to rest in him and to trust in him. And prayer is the most basic and important thing a follower of Jesus can do because it helps us grow in that trust. Let's pray together. So Father, today, um, we look at the Lord's Prayer in its simplicity, in its shortness, in its directness. And we realize, God, what you really want for us is just you want us to come before you. You want us to trust you, to know you, to not be bound up in our own performance, but really to be free before you. And so I wanna pray today for anyone who's with us who struggles with prayer. Something that maybe they they wanna put off, it's something they don't feel like they're very good at, it's something they need to grow in. And yet, Lord, we wanna hear the liberating news, the good news, that this isn't really about us to begin with. Instead, help us to reframe, to understand that you are good, that you love us, that you're on our side, that you just want us to know you and to relate to you. And so Father, today I I pray for freedom for us, that we might be free to pursue you, to seek after you with a heart that is set on you, not on getting praise from other people or getting praise from ourselves because we think we've performed well, but simply is set on you because this is what life is like in your kingdom. Lord, we love you and we thank you that you first loved us. And for anyone who's with us who doesn't know the love of our Father, the love of one who gave himself for us fully and completely. We wanna come before you with a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, would you forgive me my sins? Would you lead my life? God, we love you so much, and we thank you for your goodness. It's poured out into our lives every single day. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Hope you were blessed. We trust that the Lord is taking these times of worship, speaking deeply in your heart, encouraging you, challenging you, growing you deeper in Christ, um, connecting your heart to Him. A big thank you today to the folks who helped lead us in worship, to Stephanie, to, uh, to the people who put this, this work together, Alec and Taylor and some other folks, to the worship team, to Spencer. If you're encouraged today, we encourage you to take a moment, share this, this worship experience on social media, encourage somebody else. We look forward to having you with us next week as we continue. We have no idea what week we are on, But we know this, we're going to be in the middle of Matthew 6, and we're going to be 
hearing Jesus share with us about the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom that we are invited to be a part of. We look forward to having you with us. May you have a great week. The Lord bless you and keep you. Peace out.
Ain't since had a crimson cost. You nailed my debt to that old rugged cross. An empty slate at the empty grave. Thank God that stone was wrong.